learn from all these earthquakes? Well, to get the answer to that question, we're here at the campus of the California Institute of Technology, where some of the most advanced seismic research is being conducted today. We'll be talking with scientists both from Caltech and the U.S. Geological Survey to help us understand what the threat to us really is. Let's go inside. Most of us in Southern California have experienced earthquakes, so we know what they feel like. But a lot of people really don't understand the dynamics of an earthquake or what causes an earthquake. We literally have hundreds of earthquakes every day here in Southern California. And as you see behind me, some of them are being recorded right now. The more you understand about earthquakes, the more you can alleviate your fears. The basic types of earthquake faults we have here in Southern California is a strike slip where the ground breaks and the two pieces of the earth will actually move either side by side like the San Andreas and you can also get a thrust fault type earthquake like we had in Northridge where the ground can either move underneath at an angle up or down. There's also a lot more to understand about the dynamics of an earthquake to really get an idea of what's taking place. To expand our understanding, we spoke with seven prominent scientists in their fields. They include Dr. Thomas Henye, a professor of geophysics and director of the Southern California Earthquake Center. Dr. Ail Hauksen, a Caltech seismologist, senior research associate in geophysics, and a specialist in earthquake instrumentation. Dr. David Wald, a U.S. Geological Survey seismologist specializing in the study of strong motion seismology. Dr. Ken Hudnut, a U.S. Geological Survey geophysicist and geodesist specializing in the study of displacement and ground movement. Dr. Bill Iwan, a Caltech seismic engineering professor of applied mechanics, a current member and former chairman of the California Seismic Safety Commission. Dr. Lorraine Wong, a former U.S. Geological Survey seismologist and independent seismic consultant. And finally, Dr. Thomas Heaton, a U.S. Geological Survey seismologist specializing in the study of engineering and strong motion. Let's begin our discussion of earthquakes and the science of plate tectonics with Dr. Heaton. Ultimately, earthquakes are made by uh, redistributions in the, in the land masses along uh, various boundaries. And in particular, land masses seem to move as a unit, and those uh, units we call plates. And the plates uh, have uh, more or less uh, reasonably well-defined boundaries. And one of the boundaries is through California, and the boundary runs up uh, along the coast of California, and then along the Aleutian Islands, and then uh, along Japan, all the way around the Pacific Ocean. The science of plate tectonics describes how the Earth's crust moves along the surface of the Earth. The Earth is, can be considered like an orange, that is, the Earth's crust is an orange rind, but it's not solid, it's composed of many different pieces. When these pieces move with respect to each other, they bump up against each other. And when they bump up against each other, they create a lot of earthquakes. If you look at California in terms of plate tectonics, of course, the major plate boundary that we have is the San Andreas Fault. On the east side, we have the North America plate. On the west side is the Pacific plate. And as these two plates grind past each other, we have earthquakes. The San Andreas Fault is the only fault in California that is long enough to accommodate the big one. What we'll see in the big one is simply a pulse of movement that will travel either uh, from south to north or from north to south along the San Andreas Fault for a distance of about two or three hundred miles. The San Andreas Fault extends from essentially the Mexican border in California to Cape Mendocino. It's probably something on the order of uh, four or five hundred miles long. Now, we don't believe that the fault ruptures in a giant earthquake from end to end, but rather in smaller earthquakes, maybe a third of the fault at one time and a third at another time, and maybe even smaller segments of the fault. And we can have earthquakes on the San Andreas ranging from size, uh, magnitude size up to uh, 7.9, and as small perhaps as a magnitude 7.5. We're standing out here in the south edge of the Mojave Desert. The San Andreas Fault runs along the uh, southern edge of the Mojave Desert. And we're on the Mojave segment of the San Andreas Fault, which is the closest part of the fault to the Los Angeles metropolitan area. This part of the fault ruptured in earthquakes in 1812 and in 1857. And there have been studies of how the fault behaved prior to that in prehistoric earthquakes as well. We're standing on a part of the fault 
where it goes off into the mountains southeast of us down towards Cajon Pass. And you can see the fault running through the mountains. It's like a gun sight notch over there at the skyline. This part of the San Andreas Fault moves laterally. The uh, San Andreas is mainly a strike slip fault, which means that when it ruptures in an earthquake, the ground moves like so. There's lateral movement, and most of the shift of the ground is in a horizontal plane. Exact ground motions and the way people would feel things would depend on the, the nature of the earthquake. It could start on one end in the north, it could start on the other end in the south and rupture in either direction, or it could start in the middle. It's highly unlikely, in fact, we would think virtually impossible that the entire San Andreas could rupture in a single large earthquake. It would certainly be a very large earthquake. But uh, we don't see any evidence of this in the past history of behavior of the San Andreas.